Greetings all, it's Max, and we're back, and we're doing a little off-the-cuff study. A little bit. Um, apparently people are using Romans 10 as a proof text for uh, faith works, uh, lordship, salvation stuff. And uh, we're going to take a look at it. It's only one chapter, but I want to do start with Romans 9 because that's the way I roll. To get everything into context. And let's see, we're going to go... Uh, down to verse 28 so we can really prove work salvation for he will finish the work and cut it short in righteous because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth and Isaiah said before except the Lord of Sabaoth had left us a seed we had been as Sodoma we had been made like unto Gomorrah what shall we say then that the Gentiles which followed not after righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. <laughs> okay. But Israel, remember my dispensations here, Jews, Gentiles, Old Testament, New Testament. The object of people's faith is going to change, and you could make a new dispensations if you want to. I, I don't, but whatever. But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness. What does that mean? They followed after the law of righteousness, but have not attained to the law of righteousness. What does that mean? They were trying to work for salvation. That's what that means. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at the stumbling stone. Reiterates it right there. Okay? We're talking about Jews. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling and a rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. So now, we're going to go to Romans 10, which apparently people are using as a proof text for uh, Lordship Salvation, and that you need to call upon the name of the Lord. And that's the thing that you need to do in order to be saved. Again, you know, if you can't speak, um, how can you do that? But whatever, we won't, we won't worry about that. We'll just see what it says. So I've just set it up with Romans 9, and now we're going to Romans 10. So we know exactly what we're talking about. We're talking about Jews who are following the law, and that's how they believe they're being saved. Okay? Okay. Romans chapter 10. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Who? Israel. For I bear them record that they have zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going on to about establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. They're doing their works. <clears throat> They're doing their works. That's what they think is, is getting them into heaven. And they don't understand. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Uh-oh. There's no more law for people who believe? Hmm... For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth these things shall live by them. Yeah. Yeah. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. The righteousness of faith is wise. Say not in thine heart who shall descend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above. When you're doing works, you're adding to... Christ sacrifice on the cross. That's that's it. This is why I do not believe that works has ever been a part of anything in the Bible for salvation. Because you're saying you can outdo God. Or who shall descend into the deep, that is, to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach 
Um, he did, he's not preaching anything else other than faith. Until you go to verse 9, which is where they're going to go. Right there. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Well, this obviously con contradicts everything else in the New Testament. If you have to confess with your mouth to be saved. So what are they talking about here? Well, we'll keep on going. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. What? With the heart? And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. What does that mean? What does that mean? Oh, you're believing unto righteousness. And then when you're saved, confession made unto salvation. After you're saved, you're going to preach Jesus Christ. That's what that means. Otherwise, this sentence doesn't make any sense. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. How can you be righteousness when the sentence before it says you need to confess with your mouth? You need to take it into context and see what they're actually saying. Salvation is by faith. And then you're supposed to confess the Lord after you're saved. For there is no difference between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Well, obviously, that means that you need to call his name out. Mm, no, that's not what it says. How then shall they call on him in who they have not believed? Right there. You can't call upon the name of the Lord unless you're saved. You can't. God ain't listening. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings and good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Um, says faith, doesn't say talking. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily. Their sound went into all the earth, and their words unto all the ends of the world. But I say, did not Israel know? Again, we've been talking about Jews the whole time. First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by foolish nation I will anger you. But Isaiah is bold, and saith, I was found with them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. But to Israel he saith, All day long I have stretched forth my hands unto disobedient and gainsaying people. We can keep, keep on rolling, and I kind of want to, and just go all the way through Romans 11. But there is nothing in Romans 10 that, that teaches lordship salvation. You have the thing where it says, um, For the saying out of your mouth, they shall be saved. And then you have the very next verse saying that you can't do anything except have faith. So what are they talking about? They're talking about when you get saved, you're supposed to forward the idea of Jesus Christ. That's what you're supposed to do. So that's a very brief, basically just even a reading of Romans 10. And a preemptive, uh, I guess, defense against people who want to use this as some sort of a lordship salvation tool. Or say that Romans 10 is in a different dispensation. Um, some people do that where they'll take different New Testament verses and put them into different dispensations. I would very much call that hyper-dispensationalism. Um, so yeah. Everything's all good in the book. It's all good. And if you got any questions, let me know in the comments. With that, I'm out here.